Nessa girl, let me explain something to y'all. And listen at me good, daughter. In these days and times, if it ain't one thing a black man gonna do, one thing he not gonna do is miss an opportunity to embarrass you, okay? Who am I talking about, child? And I don't know why we surprised that scamming-ass Nigerian, just like all the rest of them scamming-ass Nigerians in Atlanta that all them hoes trying to get. That's right. I'm talking about Portia Williams' Gabardi husband. <laughs> Want to talk about it? Here go. <laughs> Y'all was so happy when the people said that Portia Williams Guardia, just like LaGuardia Airport, was landing that airplane back on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. But quiet as it's kept, honey, the way Simon legal troubles don't hit the damn fan, it looked like Portia ass might be being <laughs> deported back to goddamn Nigeria along with Simon white teeth having ass. Okay. Lord have mercy, Jesus. I'm going to tell y'all. One thing outside of a man taking any opportunity to embarrass you, one thing the internet going to do is take every opportunity to go dig down in court records and find out people's business. Who does this? Like, I'm saying who does this. I know people who do it. Um, Y'all know there's a whole job of people who just go down to the courthouse and go through court filings to find salacious things to report back to TMZ and other bloggers. I know some of the people that do it. One person in particular is Dennis Byron. He's somebody who's a reputable reporter. He spends a lot of time down at the courthouse here nor there. But let me tell y'all something. This is one thing I'm standing on at 40 years old. In 2024, unless it's murder, molestation of children, rape, or some type of violent, heinous crime, don't come up in my face telling me shit about somebody did in the 90s. Quiet as it's kept. Don't come up in my face telling me no shit nobody did in the early 2000s. What we in? 2023? 24? What we in? 23 or 24? Whichever one it is, I'm a little worse than the credit bureau. The credit bureau go back seven years. I'm going back 10. If it's some shit that somebody did outside of that 10-year window, Please don't come in my face trying to give me the oohs and ahs and the tees. This T on Simon, while it does help paint a better picture of who he is and where he comes from and potentially how he may have built his wealth, this really is no T. Don't tell like like like, but like don't get me wrong, we finna get into the laughs and we finna get into the nitty-gritty of the shit. But none of y'all finna sit up here and act like y'all ain't never did no dumb shit in y'all 20s. I got friends right now with degrees that damn near be, ought to be glad to make it out of college because they ass stole out of Walmart. I got friends that got shit on their records for stealing, doing credit cards, writing bad checks. Now, bitch, everybody don't wrote a bad check. Now, but see, when some of y'all girls do it, that's fraud. When I did it, it was called floating. There's a difference between fraud and floating, Okay. Let me point it out for the girls that may not know about it. Some of you young hoes who might not understand. Floating is when you get paid on Friday, but you write a check on Tuesday or Wednesday in hopes that your direct deposit will beat that check to the bank. That's called floating, okay? All of y'all don't float, especially the girls, the check writing girls that, that was old enough to have accounts back in the day with checks on it. Fraud is when you go up in them people damn store and you write a goddamn check with no intention to pay. Okay? There's a difference between floating and fraud. We all don't wrote a bad check. We all don't hit enter on the web portal and hope I direct deposit hit before I rent hit. Okay. And then our rent got kicked back or whatever charge got kicked back. But then when it was time for them to rerun it, your money was in there because you was just trying to avoid a late fee. See, bitch, y'all don't understand. Bitch, I don't live, I ain't always been rich. 
I ain't always been a rich white woman, okay? I don't live that in these streets. I know about floating the payment, baby. Nevertheless, though, we ain't going to get Simon no grace because he wasn't floating. He was doing fraud, okay? Credit card fraud, identity fraud, immigration fraud, alias fraud, quiet as it's kept. Portia better check and make sure her ass got a real marriage license because his ass might have did license fraud, okay? If it ain't one thing them Nigerians in Atlanta going to do or ain't going to do, Let's take an opportunity to run a scam. Call it ignorant. Take that up with y'all people. Okay, y'all got a general reputation in Atlanta and other major cities for doing scams. And one of y'all biggest scams is marrying these women and fucking up their credit and their finances and taking all their money out their account and then leaving their ass. The number two scam that they ass be running is having whole damn families, whole damn wives and other families. Now, Simon is not that dude. Simon is very family-oriented. I told y'all, I know Simon. I used to hang out at his spots. His phone number's in my phone. I could call him right now. I have not talked to him in a while, but I do know Simon, and he has always been a very pleasant, pleasant, pleasant businessman. Um, here's what I want to point out, though. Um, when I was reading over the charges, you know, some of the alias fraud, he came over here uh, on a work visa got in trouble with some fraud stuff, you know, ended up getting deported, um, used a fake name to come back into the country, you know what I'm saying, used fake name in order to, to, to get temporary immigration status. And long story short, he's still not a permanent resident, from my understanding of what it is I've been reading, that he went to apply to, you know, to, have, to get his citizenship stuff in order, and they denied it based on the stuff that he did in the 1990s when it comes to um identity fraud now a large part of me is like okay y'all cannot hold on financial crimes against that man right don't 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 come talk to me about some shit i did 30 years ago however when it comes to obtaining citizenship and you already committed you know id or citizenship fraud to get into the country i can't understand a world where people are like no ma'am we're not going to approve you approve you for this or whatever the case may be but I will say I am of the current belief. I do not know. I am of the current belief that Simon is on the up and up. But let's talk about it, y'all. You know, N Nigeria, from my understanding, is a very, you know, prosperous place, and people can do well over there. The, the Nigerians come over here with all that attitude. Like, all of them was fucking kings and queens living in fucking uh, mansions. and cast Not even mansions, honey. Living in castles over there um, and compounds and estates over there in Nigeria. So... You know, I, I do believe that Simon could have made a life for himself in Nigeria, but there was a reason his ass wanted to come over here so damn bad, so bad to the point where they deported his ass and he came back within two weeks. Now, baby, I thought it took a week to fly over there. Pardon my travel ignorance, but goddamn, baby, whatever it is, that American dream you was trying to take a bite out of, baby, that thing had motivated the hell out of you because how you get kicked out the country and find a way to get back within two weeks and it take a whole damn week to fly over there. Um, I will say this, whatever the type of damn fraud, racketeering, you know what I'm saying, criminal ring that Simon was a part of, he did right by the proceeds. See, that's what y'all don't understand. When you do fraud, I always tell y'all, hit that lick one time and don't hit it again. But if you're going to hit that lick again and again and again, if you're going to sell drugs again and again and again, if you're going to sell pussy again and again and again, if you're going to do credit card and check fraud again and again and again, please have an exit plan. Please tell me that you are doing the fraud in order to gain the capital, in order to build a legitimate business, okay? And then once you build your legitimate business, then you let your drug dealer friends or your drug dealer boyfriend launder money through your business and you get a good accountant like me who know how to make it look legit. I ain't telling y'all about all my past lives and all my past dealings and what I sometimes do on the side currently because I got accounting education. But I just give the people the information these days. I don't sign my name to it as the preparer. I just tell them if I was you, I would do it like this. If I was you in a hypothetical world, I would deposit this here, but make sure the deposit is not this much. Say that it is for this. That way you don't get triggered by audit. That's the type of stuff that I do. Giving people advice is not fraud, okay? 
and telling people how to get away with fraud. If the if the if the word is legitimate, that ain't fraud either. Because I gave you factual business. Okay. See, y'all got to learn how to do crimes the legal way. And then once the money clear, because I taught you how to do this, give me my things. I need my 25%. And if you get caught up with the FBI or the IRS, baby, I'm in your system as a vendor and was paid as a consultant for what? Social media management. Do Jesus, baby. Let me tell y'all one thing about me, bitch. I'm going to keep a coin. But I'm just going to do my shit the American way, not the Nigerian way, baby. I'm doing my shit the American way. If you're going to do your fraud, you do your fraud the American way. But catch these T's. Now, it's no secret um, Portia jumped her ass up off them damn housewives the minute she got with Simon because she was trying to evade the heat that came behind what she did with Fallon. Here's the thing, and I'm going to speak to with that. And, you know, there's an argument that could be made that that's not why, that's not why. And it may not be 100% why, but Portia's not going to get anybody to believe that the way her and Simon's marriage came about was not a factor in her choosing to believe, to leave. Nobody's going to ever believe it, so she might as well not even begin to tell that story. But the universe said, baby, we're going to get you one way or another. If we're not going to get you for putting your tussie cat in that lady pool and then in her husband's face while he was sitting over there in the corner like a creep looking, quiet as it's kept, their relationship started that day, if you let me tell it. Um, if we're not going to get you on that, which so much time has gone by now, we can't even really use that as a read because they don't made it to the altar and everything. And it's like, okay, even if I did cheat with him, even if I did take the lady husband, he mine now, read complete. Um, even if they're not going to do that, trust and believe Kenya is going to have a field day with the fact that your husband do fraud, baby. She might not be able to get you on that, but she don't found something else. And God forbid they bring back that gutter snipe ass Marlo Mastercard, uh, Mastercard Marlo Hampton. If they bring her ass back, you know, that bitch goes to hell upon first greeting. Okay. She is going to read you down. If I had everything over there was in fraud, but she she might not be the one to talk because she still don't know that I know and got them sissies phone numbers in Florida that was doing her credit card fraud for her fashions. I'm going to save that and keep that bullet in the chamber. I'm going to save that one for the day where I may have to tell all her business, okay? Because we all know her former close stylist. I ain't going to say his name because he don't deserve no stray bullet. But who was out in the streets telling her all her business? Girl, don't, don't think don't nobody know your business, bitch. We know your business, bitch. This my business notebook right here. And all I'm like Monique from Housewives of Potomac. And all y'all hoes got a page. And Marlo, you got about one, two, three, four, five, six. It's about eight bullets in this book I could shoot your ass with when the time comes. Hopefully it'll never come. And maybe we could be friends again. I don't want to be your friend again. Anyway. Nevertheless, child. Speaking of characters from the Housewives of Atlanta, now that the shit done hit the fan, I can go ahead and tell y'all a little more about it. Remember I had told y'all way back when, when they was filming the reunion, that Apollo Nida pops up on that damn reunion, that Married to Medicine reunion, y'all, but it's not what the girls think. So, you know, when it first broke, a lot of people was like feeling like, oh, this is some ambush type shit, like, Oh, shit, bravo, real messy, because Phaedra definitely went out of her way to evade, not, not even went out of her way. Phaedra made it a point to let it be known she didn't want to discuss Candy and that they were not to discuss things going on with her marriage with Apollo and the crimes that he did, so on and so forth. It was just understood that that was off the table as far as fodder for the show. Well, let me tell you what else Phaedra Parks understood. Phaedra Parks also understood that her performance on this season's of Married to Medicine, it completely fell flat. I love Phaedra to death. Matter of fact, I might even call her phone and let her know that I did this video about her. It's just true teach. And, and, you know, her being an attorney, her being a facts person, you get mad about it all day you want, but it's the truth. You, they cleared room to pay you, and they got zero return on their investment. Phaedra was literally the most anticipated but most disappointing addition to Married to Medicine since it's been around. I mean, except for this other bitch on there, Alicia, 
who God knows she ain't going to be back because you don't have one memorable moment. The, the most memorable thing that we got from Alicia was when she was doing the, the, the live with Phaedra, Sweet Tea, Dr. Heavenly, and Toya, and Sweet Tea and Heavenly got into it. That was the most eventful thing, and I feel bad for Alicia because Alicia packed up her whole family and moved from D.C. to Atlanta for this show, A Little Bit of Tea. Alicia was one of the cast members of Married to Medicine D.C., and Married to Medicine D.C. ended up falling through. After the girls had contracts and everything, it ended up falling through. In short, because some of the girls were just being difficult with their request, and networks these days are not in the habit of creating monsters. The same reason the show that I was on with Marlo and Rico on WeTV uh, got tossed because certain people were being difficult, and that was the network's words. We're not in the habit of creating monsters. If they're this difficult now, imagine how it's going to be later. Um, nevertheless, Phaedra was the one who brought Apollo on. She knew she had to. She had to throw a Hail Mary. Now, catch these teas. She's been off of marriage. She's been off of Housewives for whatever amount of years or whatever. And, you know, several people in the city have reported to me, Phaedra makes it a point to let the girls know you know, she doesn't need the money. She's got other business ventures, which I do believe her, or whatever the case may be. And they, she made a pretty coin while she was there, so I'm pretty sure she saved it. But, baby, you're not going to get anybody to believe that you don't miss that check. And quite frankly, at the dollar amount, at the dollar amount by which they pay y'all, you need it. You need it. I need it. And everybody in between need it. There is never a right time to not need 800000 to a $1 million. There's never a right time to not need it, okay? And with what you're doing with your other business ventures, I love you to death and I respect the hell out of you, but I'm pretty sure they're not bringing in that much revenue in that short amount of time. So, bitch, you needed it, okay? Um, and you want it and you want to keep it. So what you decided to do, what she decided to do was, since y'all want something salacious or y'all think it's going to be salacious, let me bring Apollo on. And so Apollo comes on, and it ain't going to be what y'all think. It ain't going to be no ambush, and it ain't going to be no embarrassment of Phaedra. It was a coordinated effort to give the people the tea that they've been looking for, and Phaedra does not walk away from the situation looking bad at all because she is the one who orchestrated it and created the situation in order to keep her ass on that show. Um, now, here's the funny thing. You know, Phaedra fights to stay on Married to Medicine because she needs to check, and then, bam, this opening at Housewives comes up. In all honesty, I would love for them to ship Phaedra's ass right back over to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. It only makes sense. It does. She didn't make any sense on Married to Medicine. Uh, there may be one sticking point. You know, a lot of people assume that these girls are signed to Bravo, um, that's not how it works. They're not signed to Bravo. Um, they are signed to the production company. The production company gets a budget from Bravo. The production company then allocates the budget for production, salaries, cast trips, so on and so forth. And there are situations where you are signed to the production company for X, Y, Z amount of years and that you are able to exit upon them letting you go or them giving you some sort of release. Um, I'm not sure if they signed Phaedra or how many years they may have signed Phaedra. I'm pretty sure that they signed. They, most times, guys, these contracts come with a standard three-year, uh, but they have the option to let you go at any point, but you don't have the option to walk away at any point. Um, considering the fact that coming back to television, Phaedra really did not have much leverage and she needed this. She probably is signed for a couple years. And here's the thing, purveyors of pop, they can be like, yeah, we know she wants to go over there, but we're not letting her go. And they can do it just to be nasty. You know what I'm saying? So it really isn't as simple as housewives saying we want her back. Bravo's always wanted her. Let's let's keep, let's let's be clear here. Bravo always wanted her. Candy just carried more weight. And if bringing Phaedra meant losing Candy, then they were willing to sacrifice Phaedra. The fact that they even broke the rules 
to put Phaedra on Married to Medicine, doing damn well she ain't married to medicine, and this Reiki shit is a bunch of damn bullshit. Um, it just goes to show that they wanted her, and this gives me a lesson that I told y'all a long time ago. You get further in life being liked than you do being qualified. And remember how I said you may not have the qualifications, but people will bend, mold, and move mountains to make space for you if you're liked. Phaedra is a fine, fine example of that. Phaedra's um, half-baked attempt to appear married to medicine, um, it was we saw through that shit from the very beginning. And yes, she was dating a doctor at the very beginning, but child, whatever. His ass ain't nowhere to be around now. She ain't married to medicine, but they liked her. So they made it work. Come do this little Reiki bullshit. That quiet ass is kept. I know Phaedra Mama with her religious ass wouldn't even come do that damn Reiki bullshit because y'all know how Southern church people is. They think everything is the devil. My grandma wouldn't even let us walk around the house talking about we Leo, Sagittarius, and all of that because she thought the damn astrology was the devil. Nevertheless, so, you know, in a perfect world, Phaedra would take her ass back over there to the housewives and fool our law with, with Kenya and Portia and whoever else Ming Lee is over there now and whoever else they decide to do the show with, but it ain't no damn guarantee that she's going to be over there. Speaking of build the show out around, my suspicion tells me that they are going to probably try to build that show out around Portia. Me knowing that Ming Lee is uh, playing over there with the girls, her and Portia are in the same age bracket. Kenya's a bit older. Candy's gone. Um, television shows and networks try to always skew young anyway. Plus, we've gotten so much years and mileage off of Kenya. I highly doubt they build anything out around Kenya um, because they know that Kenya's expiration date is coming up pretty soon. Uh, anyway, if, if there's anybody you're going to get some legs and longevity off of, it's going to be Portia and company. Now, what y'all not going to do is Shamia us to death. I love Shamia. Um, you know, she can come around, but please do not be trying to shove Shamia in our face. Go back and get Tanya. Now that Tanya ain't got no man, and she walked away voluntarily and still in good standing, go get her. Um, it's quite a few girls around that they could get, and I'm going to keep y'all posted as I start getting the tea on who all the girls is. But speaking of one last girl who they should go get, but we know it'll never happen, that Fonnie Willis. The uh, the attorney that's on trial right now with the Trump stuff and sleeping with the man down to the office. Um, you know, I I am shocked, uh, tickled, and shamed of some of the comments that I've seen regarding this Fonnie Willis situation. Um, first of all, it's kudos to all educated, articulate black women who carry the power of their ancestors because Fonnie was not playing with those people in that damn courthouse. And for anybody who's ever testified in court, oftentimes when you're sitting on the bench and you're the one being interrogated, it's, it's a very intimidating situation to be in. But there's something to say that when the person you are interrogating is more in qualified than the person who was doing the interrogating, you just come to the table with a different level of confidence while they never showed us the face, at least from the clips that I saw of the people asking Fonnie the questions, I'm pretty sure they were sweating all between their legs and then they buttoned up under their arms and they was musty as all hell because she was not playing with their ass. She was schooling their ass. And quite frankly, she was talking to them people any type of damn way she wanted to with class, dignity, and respect and within the confines of the courts. And I love it. Here's the thing. Um, we all make questionable judgment, questionable decisions. We all have questionable judgment from time to time. I hate that Fonnie has found herself in this situation, especially considering the fact that it looks like there's bad blood between her and the dude. Like, it's one thing for your job to be in jeopardy, but you found true love. It's one thing for your reputation to take a hit, but you found true love. It's one thing for people to be looking at you sideways and you endure public scrutiny, but at least you can run home to the comfort of the man and the situation that may have cost you that public scrutiny. This is unfortunate because her reputation, her career, you know, her image and likeness, all of this is taking a hit for a relationship that honestly felt like it was very tense and tumultuous the whole way through. When you listen to her explain um, the nature of their relationship, he sounded very misogynistic that he told her that a woman couldn't do nothing for him but make a sandwich. 
so on and so forth. So it just sucks that all this happened. But listen, two things can be true at the same time and two things can occur at the same time, okay? Um, this by no means, no matter how hard the, that Trump MAGA crowd, certain white people and certain black people, no matter how hard they want to use questionable judgment that she made in her personal life that spilled over into her business life as grounds to invalidate what she's doing with Trump and what she's done in the office. Um, it don't matter. And okay, fine. Fuck it. Let's nail her ass to the cross for the inappropriate relationship with the man. Fine. I, you know, you got to give a little to get a lot. Let's nail her ass to the cross. Let's shame her. Let's nail her to the cross. Let's, let's call her unprofessional. Let's say sis should have known better. Let's do all that. That still ain't got nothing to do with Trump and that trial over there. It still ain't got nothing to do with it. It still ain't got nothing to do with it. So let her reap all the hell that come with, with what she did over here, but let mama do her work over there because what mama doing over here is the Lord's work. It's the Lord's work. And let me tell you something. I'm the first person to let y'all know you know what I'm saying? Joe Biden and Kamala, they may or may not be the best best um, 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 leaders for this country, but you ain't finna sit here and tell me Trump is any better. And even if he is, depending on who you ask, based on, you know, economics and, and, and where you are income-wise and, and what your tax liability may be, even if that's where your head is, in the long run, y'all, it is not worth the level of division and dissension that this man has caused between in this damn country. Like, I'm 40 years old, and I never saw the, the level of racial upheaval and hate that we experienced when that man was in office. I just never have. I'm, I'm of the Nickelodeon generation, and when I came up in the 90s, you know what I'm saying, watching TV and stuff, all the black kids and all the white kids got along. We didn't have all this. We did not have all this overt racism. Yes, racism existed. It was a bit more covert. Depending on where you lived, it may have been overt. But I can honestly say in my life, for the most part, it was peace and harmony until Trump came along with this MAGA shit. Okay? It emboldened and it empowered the, the, the dirty underbelly of America. And quite frankly, I understand that it will always exist. But them hoes need to go back and hide it. They need to go back and hide it, and they do not need to have an all-exalted ruler who is the face and the figurehead for their fears, beliefs, wants, desires, and overall their hatred. I'm not here for it. So that being said, get up out that lady coochie, get up out her pocketbook, and let her do the Lord's work by getting this Trump stuff done in Georgia so we can keep his ass off the ballot. That's all I got. Ain't got no more y'all hoes. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're new to my channel. And I'll call y'all later. Bye.